and welcome to the cottage at Woodland Corners. Today we'll be making Italian sausage lasagna. I talked in the first video I made about how I'm all about big flavor with little effort. I like to cook, but there's a lot I'm not interested in doing from scratch. I remember telling a friend about some shortcuts and they said that the way they were raised to think about making food made them feel like I was telling them to cheat. Uh, I think at the time I was recommending a chili seasoning packet or something, but honestly, what's the difference between me saying you can add several different spices independently and me saying you can buy the spices pre-blended in a cheap packet? Have I seasoned chili from scratch? Yes. Have I soaked dried beans? Of course. But there are things to consider when you're talking about a recipe and someone's individual situation. So somebody's budget, somebody's timeline, how much they enjoy cooking and why. Is it just that they like to eat things that they've participated in making or that they won't cook anything they haven't grown themselves? I sometimes like making things from scratch, but most often I'll go with a shortcut if I can still get a good result. If it has a good flavor and I can do it easier, then I want to know. When it comes to lasagna, for example, I found something called oven ready pasta. As someone who actually owns a pasta maker and likes to make pasta myself, but also someone who's bought and cooked lasagna noodles off the shelf, I wasn't sure that something that didn't require pre-cooking would even work. But I don't love working with giant slippery noodles, even though they're very forgiving. So just to lay the groundwork, if I make my own pasta or I buy standard lasagna noodles, they have to be boiled first before we can use them. So then you have to make sure that they aren't super wet when you put them in the pan because you really don't want to get soupy lasagna. It's supposed to be solid, not sitting in an inch of liquid. This is why I often also pre-cook vegetables that contain water when I'm making a mainly vegetable version of lasagna just to get the water out. But I did buy and try the oven ready noodles and my first experience with them taught me that you need to get them covered or you need to cover the pan with something that will at least steam them. If they aren't exposed to some sort of moisture in the process, they don't cook and you end up with a very hard crunchy noodle, not the overbaked crunchy that some people actually like, but the crunch of a completely uncooked noodle. So as long as they're covered in sauce, they cook as well as any other lasagna noodle that I've tried. So I'm now a fan of this amazing lasagna shortcut. My maternal grandparents came from Italy, literally off the boat. I grew up eating a lot of lasagna and it was honestly never a favorite of mine, which is strange because everyone who came to the house loved it when my mother made lasagna. Lots of people love lasagna as a dish. I am okay with it. I like it. It's just not a favorite. When I was in elementary school, my friend Monica invited me to come over for a sleepover and her mother made us lasagna. I remember distinctly her mother taking cottage cheese and adding that to the, the lasagna. And I remember being very shocked by that. I don't think I had ever had lasagna at that point at anyone else's house. So this is the first time I saw someone else make it. It was the first time I saw someone put cottage cheese in it. I had eaten cottage cheese growing up and I had also eaten lasagna. I had never had cottage cheese in lasagna. So that seemed really weird to me. And the next morning when I went home, I told my mother in this very sort of hushed, someone did something wrong tone that Monica's mother, you can't believe it, what she put in the lasagna, she put cottage cheese in the lasagna. And I was shocked when my mother said, oh yeah, lots of people here do it. I was stunned. And by lots of people here do it, she meant that it was a Southern US normal thing to use cottage cheese in a lasagna as opposed to what she always used, which was ricotta cheese. So ricotta cheese is what I have used and I like to use. Ricotta has a really distinct flavor. When you try it, you'll know it. It does not taste like cottage cheese, but it is a mild cheese and it is also, you know, a cheese that comes in a container like cottage cheese. So it's not a hard cheese that you have to grate or something like that. You can spoon it out. But I had to get used to that idea that this recipe is flexible and I didn't expect a recipe to be flexible, which is a little bit, you know, strange, but I guess when you're little, you don't just intuitively know, you know, everything. Today, when I make lasagna, 
I have sometimes inserted cottage cheese, especially if I don't have ricotta and I want to make lasagna. What I will say is that the texture is different, but I've found that if you buy large curd cottage cheese and you put it through a processor or a blender, you drain it first, you drain out all the extra liquid, and then you take the, the curds that are left and you put them in and you put them through a processor, you get a texture that is very much like ricotta. You aren't going to get that exact flavor from it, but from a textural standpoint, it's going to help the lasagna. So if you want to use cottage cheese, either for financial reasons or just because you're, you know, intimidated by flavors that aren't just like normal standard U.S. flavors, then I would say, you know, maybe give that a try and just see how you like it, because it really does make the cottage cheese curd more texturally like ricotta cheese. The other cheat I use is canned pasta sauce, which I know sounds like sacrilege coming from an Italian person. I remember my mother used to make her sauce on the stove. She would start with her meatballs, and from that she would go ahead and make the, make the tomato sauce, and she would be using things like uh, tomato paste was a normal standard thing in our kitchen growing up. But for me, while I know how to make meatballs and I know how to make pasta sauce, I just think that the difference in the flavor to me is not that huge that I feel somehow cheated by using canned pasta sauce. You can buy chunky sauces, meat sauces, vegetable sauces, plain sauces, all kinds of sauces are now available. And I would say that, you know, if you don't want to spend two hours making pasta sauce, go ahead and just use a can. Don't feel bad about it. Don't feel like you have to apologize for it. If you want to go that route, if you like making the sauce, if you find it relaxing to sort of stand over that simmering sauce for a while, I mean, I understand that. There is something sort of satisfying about it. And I support you 100% if that's where your head is at and what you like to do and how you like to cook. It's definitely uh, an achievement. But sometimes it's nice to bake a lasagna at home that you don't have to spend hours making. I'm not prepared to say that if I only have an hour to make dinner, lasagna is just off the table and no one can have lasagna because I would have to open a can. I'm totally willing to cut a few corners to get us there. And I think this is part of what cottage life means to me. It's not so much always going through the trouble to do everything from the ground up or from scratch, which can be satisfying and can be really amazing actually sometimes. But it's about that feeling of having your friends there and having that nice dinner and having it homemade so that you don't have to be in a restaurant where you get done eating and you feel like, oh, we have to clear the table out. The waiters are coming around and, you know, the, they want to make some money here and they're not really interested in us sitting for hours and chatting. When you have dinner at your home, you can sit around the table for hours and chat. You can go into another room and take your dessert and wine in there. You can enjoy your company. You can stay all night. There's nobody worrying about the financial implications of not turning that table. Whatever works for you in your situation, you do you. And so for this recipe, I've got the recipe and the ingredients in the description if you want a written version, but let's get cooking.
Thanks so much for watching. And if you enjoyed today's recipe and would like to see more of what goes on at the cottage at Woodland Corners, feel free to like and subscribe so you don't miss an episode.